All right, hello everybody. Welcome back for another breakdown today. It's exciting because this is a very good looking commercial. And I think framework stuff, I'm thinking this, this is it. This is like, you can't make it much better in my mind if you're thinking, okay, we got some kids talking there at a the table. Let's watch through the whole thing. It's for Chipotle. You like burritos, so do I. They're tasty. But I mean, this is beautiful looking imagery. And this is not, it's not an accident that it ends up looking like this. There's so many different decisions that go in to making this look possible. That that is really what, why the framework exists, just for a really quick cheat sheet on, okay, what can we do to sort of get in this world? Now, just getting into that world and knowing what to do, uh, that doesn't mean you're going to get results like this, right? This is the highest of high levels of uh, cinematography in my mind, especially now, the looks that people are going for, uh, the vibe. There's so many little decisions in here. We could talk about this. Look at the easy rig walk. Did you catch that? This is what I call the easy rig walk, right? Where you're like, you're just sort of getting over to the next location, but you don't want to de-rig from the easy rig. So you just sort of carry it at a slant and you're plodding along and the horizon ends up looking like that. And then they see you see it in the final cut. Tree of life shot. Can you have a shot of a tree uh, and not be uh, accused of stealing from the tree of life? No, is the quick answer. Okay, you see where this is going, right? Just a beautiful looking shot. And we're going to talk about the the what I think is the most the simplest part of this entire commercial, which is really this opening part, right? This is everything that we talk about every single video. This is it done correctly. So if you're wondering uh, how, when Patrick says, how do we do this right? This is basically it. Uh, key from upstage, kid looking in the direction of the girl. We're on the dark side of the line, even though there's some fill coming back in here, a little bit of that orange light that is coming back in here. It's more just look at how the shape is created. Right? It happens through having the variation, having the light, having the dark, peppering the background, using our shears and curtains in the background. Right? We've got a practical, but it's not on. Yes, that can exist. Uh, and the, even the framing, right? We've got these little elements in the foreground, little Chipotle branding. They would have been loving that. Um, the wardrobe, you know how it's not white, it doesn't immediately stick out. The brightest thing is, okay, a little bit of window, but really this is it, right? See how his, the bright part of his face is matched up to the curtains in the background. So you get light on his face, blue on the curtains, then light, then blue, then prac. This little highlight down here, so many little different layers and then shooting at an extremely shallow depth of field on anamorphic with some crazy old detuned anamorphics that have not been serviced in a while, right? This is that crazy wild look, but it feels real. It feels very naturalistic, but it takes a lot of work to get here, right? This is like, skill level, high, high skill level. And then you match that up with her single, right? Even here, right? We're looking down this way and notice what we can't see here. This is a big one. What can't you see in this frame? Well, you can't see where the key light is coming from in all the other frames, right? That's called fantastic framing because this light here, right? Is we're selling that it comes from some sort of window or some door over there, but we never see over there. We, we recognize that, okay, the light is coming from there. We get a little bit down there. We see the curtains over here, but we never actually see what it is because you don't want to see where the key light is coming from. You want to shoot the, you want to light through the window that you never see. And this is a great example of what happens when you do that, right? You get shadow side here. You can feel there's a little bit of fill, a little bit of return coming this way on the hands on this side of the face, but it's just about setting these levels, right? You get backlight, backlight, salt and pepper all the way across the frame really, really shallow depth of field. And then, like I said, the most important part is that you never see where that key light is coming from, which allows you to set the mood and keep it in whatever direction we're pointing now. As long as we stay, this is the line here between these two, as long as we stay on this side of the line, anything in here is going to look great. And this is also like a fast setup because as soon as you light the room up, really you can shoot any direction in here, right? With a few minor tweaks, which we'll talk about. And the minor tweaks come from as we come to him, I mean, beautiful, again, beautiful looking shot. You can see just a hint of an eye light in there. We come around to the sister. Where is the sister shot? Boom. Yes, eye light. Yes, please. Little tiny edge down here, extremely out of focus in the background. Little layer just there in the corner of the image. But man, just using all of those elements. And the hard part is, now, if you were going to go out and you were going to do this, is it going to look this balanced? No. No. Why? Because this is really hard. <laughs> this is the part that is the hard bit is knowing, okay, okay, let's place all these things exactly where we know where to put them. Well, we've talked about that before, you know, ex you know, all of the tricks, I know all of the tricks, but it's the balance that really sets it apart. It's like, how do you get 
great results? Well, you just practice on honing your eye uh, and being able to recognize what feels good, what feels real to what is actually going to look and feel real. This is great because you got those little tiny highlights there. We're not too hot, right? If you remember back to the video where we looked at the Tom Brady commercial, where the, the, the skin was so elevated, there was so much level, and the whole exposure was all played up in this part of the scene. If you contrast that to this commercial, if I could get the pin the right size, uh, look at how much, I mean, it's all played way, way down. We go back to a little boy's angle, right? Way down, way down. We don't want anything competing with this part of his face, you know? That is the hot spot there. That is where we want people to look. And again, it's all about choosing where you sit inside of this location. Same thing here. This is the sun wrap. If anyone has any questions, and this is how you get it, right? You put a diopter on the camera. You put a four by highlight over here. The sun comes crashing through here. You wrap around with like a little bit of poly, which gets you this look right here. And then you can chase it here with some little blue light there. You can nag on this side to go even darker. You can do lots of things, but this is the orientation that you have to have in order to be able to do the sun wrap. And then I think we come back here eventually, don't we? Oh, this one, another good one, right? Like we're in the barn. <laughs> we're in the barn. We've got all of our levels with the door sort of closed, right? We're lighting it up. We got backlight, which pulls him from the background. We got our nice warm interior light, which is gonna be overtaken by the daylight that adds our little tiny cheek here, our two eye lights, uh, just a good looking, very well balanced image, right? It doesn't feel, even the blacks, there's a little bit of something to them. They're not completely black. You can see everything inside of that frame. But then once we add in the daylight, ta-da, still it's in the perfect spot. He's sitting in the perfect spot and the camera comes around so we get that nice fall off and that nice shadow, but we're not losing any of the backlight or anything like that. That is just a good looking shot. And then we cut to, whoop, expose for out here. So again, we're not clipping. We're looking directly into harsh sun from a giant dark barn. Uh, but yet nowhere near clipping. Other good thing in here is just look at all the little extra elements that run along the frame. And again, this is like the, you get the intersection here. You're just looking for lines that create interesting intersections that allow you to create more depth, right? Because you have the depth going this way of whatever this is, the little balustrade. But then you have the same thing down here, just repeated with the light. Like there's so many areas where it converges and there's so many opportunities for depth that that is where when I say the richness or the nuance, this is what I'm talking about. Like having all of those things inside of the frame, if you look at a, a single still image, you see them, but if you just watch this through, it just feels very well put together because you're constantly having those elements inside of these frames. So that is our look at what I thought was the best looking commercial, right? You probably know the cinematographer, definitely if you listen to the podcast, uh, you will know who this is. We could do every one of their commercials because it all looks this good uh, and it's certainly not an accident. So. Uh, that is our look this week. Uh, many thanks for checking it out. If you want to see this done, but to feature films, be sure to check out the Patreon group. It is in the link below. We do uh, long form breakdowns every single week of different feature films. Um, so if you're interested in that, check it out. Okay, many thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.